Here's a question. If I ask you to think of a perfect democracy, your ideal democracy, what would it be? What would it look like? I'm sure that for many of you, the answer lies in a model in which citizens do not simply vote every four years and then let their representatives do and undo as they please. <laughs> Well, Switzerland is often referred to as the country of the eternal election campaign. It's quite likely that if you ever get the opportunity to travel there, you will see electoral posters asking for a vote in favour or against one issue or another. The first thing to know is that the Swiss legislative system is bicameral. That is, there are two chambers of representation when proposing and passing laws. In Switzerland's case, there is a chamber that represents the citizens, the National Council. This is the lower chamber and is composed of 200 representatives who are elected by cantonal constituencies, meaning that the cantons with the largest populations have more seats. And then there is a second chamber, which is the Council of States, which represents the cantons and would be something roughly equivalent to the Senate. The Council of States has 46 representatives, two for each of the 20 full cantons and one for each of the six half cantons. In other words, in this upper chamber, the population of each canton is irrelevant in the distribution of seats. This is done in order to reinforce the search for a broad consensus covering the largest number of territories and thus prevent the most populous cantons from determining all decisions. The fact is that between the two, between both chambers, they form the so-called Federal Assembly and sometimes, for very specific matters, both chambers meet jointly, resulting in the United Federal Assembly. But wait a minute, because the curiosities do not end there. The fact is that Switzerland has one of the most fragmented political systems in the world. For example, take a look at the composition of the National Council, because this is, in fact, key to everything that we're going to tell you. As you can see, the Swiss Parliament is characterised by being very fragmented, or, depending on how you look at it, by having a lot of political plurality. There are between three and four major parties with a very similar presence, and about seven others with parliamentary representation. At first glance, this political scenario would surely indicate a situation of ungovernability. To get so many different parties to a Agree. What a nightmare, right? But no, this is not the case in Switzerland. Swiss politics is one of consensus, multi-partyism and co-participation. In fact, to give you an idea, the president of the National Council is allowed to serve for only one year. Then every year, another person is elected president of the parliament. And yes, that person is usually from a different party than the previous president. You could say that in Switzerland, there is an idea that the concentration of power in just a few hands must be avoided at all costs. And one of the formulas they found was the annual limitation of mandates and a system that forces agreements between the different parties. But hold on a moment, because there there is much, much more to be said about the Federal Council, which is basically the Swiss government. It is possible that we are looking at the strangest government in the world and at the same time one of the best performing. A system of government that would surely fail in almost any other country, but which, nevertheless, in Switzerland has brought stability, unity and cultural diversity, and yes, also progress, wealth and freedom. During the year of 2019, the president of the Swiss Confederation was Orly Mora. In 2020, it was Simonetta Sommaruga. In 2021, it is Guy Parmelin. Yes, that's right. And no, don't panic. We're not talking about an epic political crisis. Swiss federal presidents are only in power for one year, from January the 1st to December 31st, during what is called the presidential year. So at the beginning of December each year, the United Federal Assembly meets to elect the president for the new presidential year, who will almost certainly be from a different political party than the previous year. What's more, the same same person cannot be re-elected for the following year. It has to be a different one. However, the person chosen must be one of the seven members of the Federal Council, who can be re-elected every four years without any problem. Okay, so has your head exploded already? Well, bear with me, because there's more. The Swiss federal government is governed by the so-called directorial system. This means that all seven members of the government have exactly the same status in terms of decision-making power and rights within the government. No one is higher on the ladder than anyone else. Yes, that's right. Switzerland is currently the only country in the world with a government that is basically a collegial body. The president simply presides over meetings and represents the government in its foreign relations. But that's it, nothing more. In addition, the government has for many years been formed by four political parties, and the 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1 formula is usually followed to distribute the seats among the four most voted parties. Do you remember what we were telling you before about parliamentary fragmentation? Well, here it is. 
and to make things even more complicated. When it comes to forming the Federal Council, that is the government, not only are the political parties taken into account, but also cultural diversity. For this reason, of the seven council members, four come from the German-speaking part, two from the French-speaking part, and one from the Italian-speaking part. This way, the composition of the government is similar to the cultural distribution of the Swiss population, so that no one complains. The fact is that, in the end, everything that we're telling you about the federal government has a practical effect, consensus. The idea is that all seven members have to argue all decisions as their own, even if they don't like them individually. You know, sometimes I give in, sometimes you give in, and that's how the Swiss government works. Doesn't it seem like it's from another planet? The truth is, my friends, is that the Swiss political system is perhaps one of the best, for many reasons. It combines direct democracy with decentralization, which is embodied in federalism, and it also guarantees cohesion in a very culturally diverse society. And all this while promoting multi-partyism and consensus politics. Piece of cake. And now, at this point, the question that I would like to ask you is, what do you think of the Swiss political system? Do you think that in your country, in your society, it would be possible to have such a system? As always, leave your answers here below in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Best regards. See you next time. Thank you